All right, now what we're gonna do is get the electric field that's created by a long, positively charged stick. Um, we're gonna get the electric field at a particular distance away from the, from the charged rod. Um, we're gonna do it an easier way this time using what's called Gauss's Law. And so Gauss's Law, uh, first I'll put it down, Gauss's Law says that the flux through a closed surface, any closed surface, um, I'm gonna go E dot dA, which is the flux through a closed surface, um, equals the charge enclosed by that surface um, over a constant, okay? So what we're gonna do is, is we have to come up with a surface for which this flux is integral is easy to, to calculate. Well, so it does take a little bit of vision about what the field looks like around this thing. Well, you know that if you put a, uh, the direction of field points in the direction that a positive charge will get pushed. So if you put a positive charge there, it's gonna get pushed away. Well, no matter where you put a positive charge, it would get pushed away from the wire. So what's gonna happen is the electric field around this thing is just gonna point kind of like radially away in all directions. I'm even gonna write over this thing. And I can't really draw out of the board because I don't have a 3D marker, but it, the field kind of points away like a, like a bristle brush, like a cylindrical brush. Uh, the bristles on the brush, it points away. So what we need to do is find a surface for which it's easy to calculate flux. Well, the hallmarks of a surface for which it's easy to calculate flux is the surface would either be you know, parallel or perpendicular to the, um, to the field. And so what we'll do is we'll pick, in this geometry, we'll pick a cylinder. So our Gaussian surface that we're gonna use is gonna be a cylinder that goes out to the point that we care about. Right, so you imagine, so here's the cylinder. In fact, I can probably just get away with, I'll just draw it solid because uh, I'm using a different color here. So completely imaginary surface. And what we're gonna do is get the, the flux through that thing. Well, the flux through the end caps, right? So, right, this is just the total flux through the, through the surface. The so this is the flux. I'm actually changing symbols instead of writing it as uh, integral around closed surface, this, this is the flux. So this will be the flux through the ends plus the flux through like the, the soup can label, right? Here's the top and bottom of the Campbell soup can, here's the soup can label. So like the wall, the wall of the cylinder. Um, and that's gonna be the charge enclosed over a constant, right? Well, the, the field points radially away like this. So that means that the, at the ends, there's actually no flux through the ends. So there's really only flux through the wall of this thing, the, the soup can label. Well, so flux, as you know, is in field times area. Um, well, all the area is perpendicular to the field and the field has a constant magnitude up there. So this is just field times area. It ultimately just boils down to like EA perp. Um, which is just E times, well, the area of that soup can label, right, if you, have a, if you have a can, I'm redrawing like a little can down here, whoops. If you take the label off the can, like imagine cutting it and stretching it out, the Campbell soup label, this would be two pi, um, one dimension would be two pi R if you, if you unravel it, and then the other dimension would be L, right, the length of the, the length of the of the cylinder so we better define that so this will just be e times 2 pi r l right now what we got to do is work on how much charge is inside this thing q enclosed well the charge per length is lambda naught well so it's just gonna be charge per length times length so it's just gonna be lambda naught l over epsilon naught so I'm gonna put that down here, lambda naught L over epsilon naught. What you notice, and this happens all the time in these kinds of problems, the, um, the electric field here shouldn't depend on some imaginary surface you just thought of. Also, the, the properties of that surface will tend to go away. Um, so that's gonna cancel out. Um, I probably, I should have made this radius big R, so let me fix that, put that back in there. And then all we gotta to do to solve for the field is divide over. Um, so finally, you get an already, you get that the field um, is uh, lambda naught over um, 2 pi epsilon naught r. But I'm doing a separating kind of the r dependent. So it falls off like 1 over r. What people will tend to do to vectorize it, like is just say that it points radially away. So you can just say it's a vector 
and it kind of points like like radially away. Um, so that's the field around a wire. Now, if you double check this um, against the way that we did this with Coulomb's law, when we were using Coulomb's law, instead of using epsilon naught, we used this constant k that was one over four pi epsilon naught, which means that epsilon naught is one over four pi k. So if we actually make that substitution here, um, what you'd see then that the field is, well, let's just put, you know, basically that would put a four pi k upstairs. So you'd get four pi k lambda naught over two pi times one over r. You'll see the pi's go away, you get a two in, the two pi goes away here. So you'll get two uh, k lambda naught over r. Um, which if you look back at example, an example that we did with um, Coulomb's law, that's the field that we got with a much more difficult approach using a um, uh, much more laborious method using Coulomb's law. Um, so this was using Gauss's law to find the electric field around a charge, long charge rod.